Hey guys, welcome back to Bitsby Trip, and this is your host Carter. Let's get right into this one. So we wanted to start this one with giving you some insight to this site visit that we just did with Merkle Standard. They're one of the first hydro deployments in the country using the new S19 hydros. But we're gonna get into the nuance it takes to get in and mine with these hydro units. We're gonna show you guys some of their GPU setups where they have 2.3 megawatts of GPUs still deployed. And then we'll take you guys through a couple other deployments on this site that has to do with open air boxes. We're talking shipping containers, both with evaporative cooling setup and then just direct cooling with just using the units themselves. And we're gonna peel back everything for you guys. Hopefully it'd be a great one that you guys can get into. We'll be dipping in and explaining some things. And then we'll also give you guys just some straight up a roll on some of the discussion that was had on this. So let's peel back and check this site out. This machine, they call that the wet end, so when the pulp is made actually another into the mill, and that's the whole reason for the electrical infrastructure. What took lots of energy was the way the pulp was made. There's two ways that you can do it with, you can separate it mechanically or chemically. We had a mechanical one, so it took a lot of horsepower. We ran five 25,000 horsepower motors, which is 18.8 megawatts uh, max. So, and this, this is all, also using energy. So you said about yeah. 18 point something over there and then what's... So actually 65. So we used about 65 megawatts to run the pulp mill. We used about 10 to run the paper mill. Really they, they haven't moved very far from this technology even though this is 30 years old. It, so if you went and built a machine today, the only thing that's different is the press yeah. section. This was one of the most interesting parts to me was this large paper mill built in 1989, you know, now that it's decommissioned and just how much energy these things actually use. And, you know, the fact is, you know, things that we do in life use energy. And this is a perfect example of, you know, a paper mill and its total energy requirement to mill and create the paper itself, dry it, and all those various applications used a total of 60 megawatts of electricity. So it was a good perspective of just seeing and capability and then a reuse of some of that capability. Probably down there in the hallway. So that's pretty clean water. Because our uh, the cooling water we just changed in the number one hydro was 850 mm -hmm. conductivity. So that's uh mill water is about 130 that we got out of the uh, spigot out there. Mm. So in in a two hour flush we went from 800 down to 300 so we cleaned it up and then that's it keeps all the material piping pumps all clean and we're setting up a time to have maintenance on that you know a routine of changing that water so this is the test that we do on that acidic above nine caustic our alarm is about 8.75 so we've got our ph here um, we do our calibration here. Mm -hmm. This is just a, just a sliver of what we used to do here. Yeah. We used to have to monitor all, all our chemicals, our phos acid, ammonia, urea. Now you're probably wondering why the level of detail when it comes to the water purity when it comes to these hydro units. And what I would say is, is there's been some lessons learned as Bitmain has tried to deploy these units on scaling issues, mineral issues, and when, anytime you're dealing with water, you will run into things like that where you need to keep the water purity at a point, especially if you're dealing with lots of pumps and very finite tubing like these hydro units have. And while you might not need an entire water treatment plant, you do have to account for some of the mineral issues that you will run into and scaling issues internally into the units. So having the best water purity and keeping track of that and system flushes are going to be a thing. So this is, take a guess which loop that is. Yeah, oh yeah. And then you feel this one, even though this is in direct sunlight. So this is the warm loop that comes from the 
as it comes out, it goes through the first set of uh, cooling pipes up there. In the middle of it, there's a shower. It comes down through the heat pipe, it goes through another set of pipes that has the uh, shower over it. And this is the cool return. This right here is just the, the open loop of the, the cooling wrapper. Mm -hmm. And that's the shower. So now that we've had some history on the water purification process, we can open up one of these machines and see what we're looking at inside of a container. So we're looking at 210 units, both with an inflow of cold water glyco mix. And then after it's heated, it goes back out in a hot return over a cooling tower, which has a essentially a three phases of cooling, which we're showing here with the shower portion of it where it's actually creating some disturbance with the water and allowing the air to cool it. And then back with cool water back through the process, as we can see here. Now we did bring out the thermal imaging to see what we were looking at from a total temperature from a surface standpoint. And you could see most of the temperature when it comes to the cold lane. Now it's also not fully apparent, but the power supply itself also is cooled in this. And a unique thing about the power supply is we did a breakdown that you can see here of the unit, 
This is a three phase power supply. Now that is extremely uncommon. Most typically ASICs have a max of around 240 where these units are now actually taking in the full three phase power delivering a much more balanced three-phase direct power, allowing this unit to normally operate at 5,500 watts of direct power and has an upper limit at 80% of its load of 9,000 plus watts. And for the folks that were wondering about sound in this unit, there was a fan inside the unit to provide airflow just down the main lane that you can stand in. And if that fan was off, we'd be in the mid 70s decibels, but we were holding right around 82 which is just about 10 decibels lower than a normal air-cooled machine. So for anybody telling you that these units will be significantly quieter, they're about 10 decibels difference. Now, I got to say I was very grateful to get out there with the team and see this implementation firsthand. There's a lot of nuance that goes on to a build like this. And as you could tell from the construction crews and the level of detail that had to go into some of the planning with the piping, along with the water purification processes, there's a lot to this type of build. And I was glad to bring this to you guys. Now, this isn't it for this visit. We still have the GPU side and the air cool boxes that we'll have in a separate video. And this definitely won't be the last time we'll be visiting Merkel. Make sure you guys are liking and subscribing and definitely put some comments down there of what else you would like to see. Thanks again to the Merkle team and we'll catch you guys on the next one.